So after all the hype of this camera, I finally got to borrow one and I'll let you know my thoughts at the end. And that's a Fuji X100V. I know I'm a little bit late to the party, but for this style of camera, I don't really want to be spending a fortune because I'm already shooting with the A7 IV and the lenses on that. Pretty cool and I love that one for most of my content creation, like I'm shooting it on this. And I just want something that I can take out and shoot with basically. So if you're like me and you don't really care that much about all this, like the extra add-ons, you just love shooting, I think this is the f camera for you. If you're looking for something a bit more substantial and you want to make some money from it or you want to create high-end videos or you want a dual camera that does photo and video, this isn't that. This is a review on a camera that you're going to just take tons of photos with and they're going to be good photos. So I'm basically just going to go through the pros and cons of this cool camera, why it got so popular and if you decide you really want one or not. So I'm going to start with the bad points because there actually isn't many for this camera. I think if you just want to shoot photos and do a little bit of videos, it's perfect and you're not too fussed about focal lengths, you're, you're just kind of using it to capture everyday life, which I think this is where it comes in pretty nice. So obviously it's got a small sensor, so it's APS-C, so you're going to lose a bit of depth of field and it's going to be pretty bad in low light. Oh, I'm still here. That's half the reason why I switched from Fuji to Sony is because of the sensor size. And I also want to say it's really good for video. And then Sony brought out the A7 IV. You are stuck at 23 mil, but that is also a pro in my eyes because I find when you stick with a certain lens, then you're going to shoot better anyway. You're going to find the angle that works. You don't become a lazy photographer. You actually have to move your feet to get the shot. You can't just sit back with your big like 7200 and just zoom in or out or the 400. You actually have to go and get the shot, which makes better angles and things like that. But you do lose a bit of depth of field on that side. The other con, it's only got a small microphone jack. So if you are going to be doing audio, you have to get an adapter for that. I and mean, it's not a mad issue, but if you're looking for high end audio, then you're probably not going to go for this one anyway. But if you do want some audio, you just have to get a smaller jack. The auto focusing isn't amazing. But I shoot a lot of film cameras, as you know, if you've seen some of my stuff on this channel, I manually focus all the film cameras anyway. Anything I use autofocus on is a Sony. And when I'm doing quick shoots and I really just need to get the shot. But that said, it autofocuses really well anyway. It's not super fast, but it is fast. Unless you're shooting sort of like um, racing or fast moving events, you're probably not going to use this camera anyway. And two, it's just not going to be quick enough. But... People used to shoot everything with film cameras, so just get better at manual focusing. So essentially, I borrowed this camera because I want to get one or look at getting one. And I used to have the Leica Q, which was an amazing camera, and I absolutely loved it. But obviously, price range, I needed some new lenses. The lenses were more important than my everyday camera, so that had to go. That said, one of the positives of the Fuji is the film simulations. If you're not that massive into editing or you don't have a lot of time, you just want to snap family shots and or just everyday shots, then you can literally throw on a film simulation and get a cool outcome straight away, band into the photo, comes out as a JPEG and it's sweet. You don't have to worry about editing. You don't have to worry about anything else. You can literally shoot and go. If you do want to add clarity to your photo, however, then it does take a little bit of time processing that in camera, so you can't shoot loads of photos back to back. You have to shoot one, wait about five seconds, and then it's ready to go again. My main draw to these types of cameras is the size. And you can see next to my Sony with 24 mil on how much difference that is. It's half the reason why I never take the Sony out for fun. I always shoot my film stuff for fun, and I don't really take the Sony out for anything apart from work jobs more specific work or video because it's just so big and I, I'm I'm too lazy to carry all that heavy stuff for a long time so that's why I love a point and shoot and also this my daughters and my son actually my son's five my daughter's six they love this they can actually get their hands on it and shoot it auto mode on here is really cool it's not amazing but it is like it's good I always say A is for awesome photos so if you ever want to know what the A is on top it means awesome photos so even my daughter can handle it, my son can handle it. it. It feels nice in my hand. I've seen some people saying, oh, it's a bit small, but actually like 
I've got massive hands and like, I mean, it'd be fine if I had a bottom grip on here, but I don't need it. Nice rest. I know. I've got big hands and that's one thing I like. I always say grab a camera and see how it feels because some cameras do feel awful in your hand and some feel better, but this one feels nice. It's good to go. Why am I reviewing this one now with the new one out? It's because this one has come down a lot in price and I feel like you're not getting a lot more in a new one. You're getting a few extra bits, but I don't think it's worth the extra money for, for, for the sort of camera you're buying it for. You can use this to shoot weddings, jobs, work on, but it's just not gonna be as versatile and all your photos are gonna look the same. For portraits, it's not that great, but it, it will still work for portraits. It's not gonna be a horrible camera for portraits. Every camera is good for the job. It's just depending on what sort of outcome you're looking for and every lens and every sensor makes the camera feel a bit different. But you can, it's not saying you can't make money on this one, you definitely can. Any camera you can make money on or shoot professionally with or whatever, but it just depends on your spec and what you're shooting, what's your turnaround time and all that sort of jazz. So for this price, for this price point and what you get out of the camera, I think it's awesome. Yes, there are lots of other cameras out there. I think with your phone, you can get great shots with your phone, but getting your phone out all the time, then you get distracted by a message and blah, blah, blah. And I think a lot of the iPhone stuff looks a little fake. Sometimes when they over HDR, too much clarity on jazz, this doesn't work that well. Whereas these style of cameras, because they're designed for photos, that's their primary function. They just always look nicer. And again, the other pro, I always think you should stuck at 23. Also, let's not forget how cool this camera looks. Like, everyone knows you've got this hanging round. It's like Flav and his big clock. You've got the Fuji. Everyone knows who you are. You're a hipster now. That's one of the reasons why I stayed away from it, because I didn't want to be that person buying one. But now I'm like, actually, it's kind of time for another everyday point and shoot. So it's on my list and I'm enjoying it so far. So one of the things... I haven't mentioned yet, or I did mention it, it does do video. So it does it in 4K, 8-bit, which is awesome as well. If you're just running around and want to capture some video, some family videos and things like that. And if you've got an external monitor, you can run 10-bit out. But again, if you've got some housing on that, it might be okay. Get some housing on it and you can have your 10-bit come out of the front. But if you're shooting, if you're really worried about 10-bit and 8-bit, I think you're buying the wrong camera again. So am I going to buy this one? Yes. Do I think it's worth the money and I'm using it every day? I don't think it's worth the money if you're trying to invest in your photography and videography career. It's definitely not worth the money for that. But it's definitely worth the money for a point and shoot, take anywhere, have fun, and doesn't matter if it gets knocked around a bit. You can literally just take it everywhere, throw it on your back, and have fun with it. Point and shoot it like it's done, and... I don't think there's a lot of downsides to this camera, to be honest, for what it is. When you think of the downsides, yeah, it's got a smaller sensor, but you're probably going to be shooting most of the time, probably outside or in a well lit area. It doesn't do amazing video. You can't change the lenses, but I think it's amazing for the price. That's my thoughts on the X100V. I know it's a little late, but it's one of those where I didn't need it at the time because I had the queue. Now I'm back into looking at something more cost effective than film and something my daughter and my son can get into. So if you want to see some more reviews or just see some more photography stuff, drop me a like and follow and let me know what you think about the X100V if you've got one. If you've got the new one, let me know what you think about that as well. I might try and get hold of one and see what it's like. And what's your favorite point and shoot? Let me know.